Praise the name of the living God. Well, this is um, Dr. Patrick Oben, and I want to welcome everyone. We're going to get started. We can't wait. Whoever would come will join us later. I see uh, we have Anita joining us, and um, another brother, sister, Asfaya Tablet. Well, God bless you. God bless you. Please, you can use the um, chat option if you want to ask, ask um, a question. You can use the chart option, or you just have everybody muted to begin with until there is a um, there is noise, and we have to um, maybe unmute or mute um, everyone else. We're well, very, very, very excited that we can we can get started on this. A lot has put this in my heart for so long, for really so long. So I want you to keep your hearts open. I believe it's going to be such a blessing, such a blessing to you. And if you have any questions along the way, I'll I'll discuss with you how um, the webinar sessions will go. First and foremost, it's so important to get this. But one. There's going to be, so I always like to do this. There is no giving in these webinars. Right? I'm not going to ask you to give any donations. There's no donation you're going to give online or afterwards. Nothing like that. So all I want you to do, keep your heart open. The Lord is going to do something in your life. Some of you might not be, <laughs> you might not be prepared what that's going to be, but just keep your heart open. I don't want you to be stressed up about sowing a seed or anything like that. I know it's been uh, part of Christian meetings now. So there is nothing like that. So keep your heart and your mind open. Mind and your heart open. So it's going to be, um, I'll be sharing my screen. Um, in the meantime, sometimes I'll have to get on to illustrate a couple of things. But I want you to just keep keep your hearts open. Okay, so okay, let's 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 get started here. The first is um, the title, as I discussed this, how to hear the voice of God. How to hear the voice of God. One, it's an online training webinar. So it's going to be more interactive, and it's going to be our first, first of a um, series of webinars we'll be having. So not really a classic sermon style. The live Bible studies I do on Thursday, they're going to be there. It's a different format. This is different. And secondly, it's going to be sort of a classroom style, not like a lecture. However, I want it to be more interactive. That's the purpose of this webinar. That's why it's different from our classic live Bible um, study sessions that we'll be having. I just have to keep admitting as um, we have people showing up. Hi, that's um, Franklin right there. How are you doing, Franklin? I'm doing well. It's wonderful. Okay. So um, it's going to be more interactional. I want to get your questions and we are going to be discussing them. And most especially, it's going to be a time of impartation. It's a time where we are going to be imparting. As I speak the word of the Lord to you, just keep, keep that in mind that I want you to be cognizant that it's going to be a time of impartation. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hello, Delia is there all the way. Um, I've forgotten where she dials in from. Delia, where are you dialing in from? Is it Mauritius? Hallelujah. God bless you. Bless you. Okay, so well, let's let's get let's continue. Now, the principal objective of this webinar is really to supernaturally empower you, empower you to start hearing God's voice 
from now. Yeah, oh, that's that's right. From Trinidad and Tobago. God bless you. So glad you are joining us. So get ready. It's a time of supernatural empowerment that you should hear God's voice personally from today. It's a little typo there. So the purpose is by the end of this day, you should hear God's voice. Not just hearing God's voice, you should be aware and able to recognize God's voice. Very quick outline. It's going to be, I'll talk to you about the spirit, soul, and body, and then talk to you about discernment. And this is the way I want us to progress. If you have any questions with each slide as we proceed, please type the question or on, just unmute yourself and ask. I'll be more than happy to stop and make sure you get clarified on everything. Remember, this is not a this is not a classic live Bible studies. I want you to understand every single thing I'm going to share. And I want to make sure that by the end of today, we are all on the same page. Well, just a quick discussion about the word of God. The word of God is God's expression and is the experience of God. This is so important. And I really want you to catch that. The word of God is the expression of God. In other words, is the self-expression of God. If you want to experience God, then get to know his word. The um, really basic thing that the Lord told me, that is the, um, the key driver to these webinars and the sessions I do on live. I do online live is God told me very clearly that he wants me or it is possible by the word of God to bring the believer to an experience of his presence, his power and intimacy with him. Let me repeat what I just said. This is what the Lord showed me that the ministry he has given to me which I'm learning how really that works, is that God the Lord told me it is possible, and that is what he wants me to do, that by the word of God alone, you can bring the believer to experience intimacy with God. That is, you come to a place where a lot of Christians are desiring to know God personally. It was my longing for a long time. It's still my longing, obviously. You want to know God from a personal perspective. You want to really know him practically. It's a good thing. It's a good desire. By the word of God alone, God can bring you to knowing Jesus intimately. I remember sharing this before, that you don't need to see Jesus physically in your room. You don't need to see, um, have some vision of God somehow first before you you come to an intimacy with God. That's very important. So by God's word alone, you're going to come to an intimacy with God. By God's word alone, you can experience the presence of God. In other words, by importation, what we're doing now, just teaching you the word of God, you can come to a place where you are experiencing God's presence. And most especially by God's word, you can be brought into experience of God's power. Just imagine you're listening to me, you're sick or you're listening to me, you feel spiritually weak, or you're listening to me, there is some, there is stress in your heart, in your mind, or depression, or suicidal thoughts, or some oppression in any way. What is the experience of power? It means by listening to the word of God alone, something can happen in your life right where you are. I don't need to be there to lay my hands on you or to touch you. So very, very, very important. God speaks to us in different ways. You know, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 1 and 2. Let me read that to us very quickly. It says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. He says, hath in this last day spoken unto us by his son. So God speaks to us in different ways. Different ways. And let me use our example today, your example. How does God speak to you today? Very interesting question. In other words, have you heard God? How does he speak to you today? Just to be very clear, to get straight to the point. 
the uh, greatest and the most important way God speaks to you is, let me get that chart rolling. The greatest and most important way God speaks to you is by the scriptures. Okay, how do you know if um, a fire tablet, how do you know if what you hear is from the Lord? That's wonderful. We will get to that in a second when we talk about discernment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, let's get back there. So how does God speak to you? Number one, the scriptures. In other words, the Bible. And that should be the most important of all. It is the highest authority that God uses to speak to you. So the scriptures. Number two, he uses circumstances around you to speak to you. That's one of the most astonishing things. God can use things happening around you to speak to you. I'll talk to you a little bit about that. God uses preachers and teachers of the word, like what I'm doing now. He uses a preacher of the word to teach you the word, to speak to you. He can use a prophet to speak to you. He can use another believer to give you a word of knowledge. God speaks to us like that. And how does God speak to us? The one that I'm really going to be talking about today, which is this. God can speak to you personally from inside of you. You've heard probably lots of preachers tell you, well, the Lord spoke to me and said, oh, this and that. How did they hear God's voice? That's what I want to teach you today. And I pray that by the end of this webinar, you will hear God's voice clearly and not just hear it, you'll be able to distinguish it. And most especially, you become confident that God is speaking to you. So I'm not going to talk about the others, how God uses prophets, how God uses circumstances around you, or how God uses the scriptures. Those are important. Today I want to talk, how do you hear God from inside of you? For example, I just told you that the Lord spoke to me. I remember, this is not my office, my office is upstairs in our, in our home here. I was praying when the Lord spoke that to my spirit. The question is, how did I hear God? Is it unique to me or can you hear God in the same way? How astonishing. And that is what we want to do, to show you that you can hear God. And my desire is that you should be hearing God like that. Okay, so let's move on from there. The prerequisite for hearing God's voice the number one and the most important of all is the Spirit of God. Very, very important. It is the Spirit of God. So God puts his word in our hearts by giving us the Spirit. This is an astonishing truth. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9, the Lord said to Jeremiah, Look, I have, uh, have put my words in your mouth. In other words, I have given you my words. And God gives us the word by his spirit. He gives us the word by the spirit of the Lord. Let me read Isaiah chapter 50, 59, verse number 21. Isaiah 59, verse 21. See an interesting verse there. The Lord speaking, it says, As for me, the Lord, this is my covenant with you. Listening to me now. The Lord says, my spirit is upon thee, and my words I have put in your mouth. He gives us his word by giving us of his spirit. Hallelujah. All right, we have uh, Mirabel says she is unable to hear us. Is that what it is, Mirabel? Hello, Dr. Patrick, I can't hear you. Please make sure your device or um, laptop is not muted. And let me know if you still can hear us. Let's make sure that you can, you can be with us and follow us. So God gives us the word by giving us of his spirit. That is so important. 
The believer in Christ has been given the Spirit of God. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. The Lord said to us that I, it shall come to pass in the later, in the days to come. Let me get Mirabel back in. Okay, so Mirabel, God bless you. Please let us know if you have any difficulties. If you can hear me, please let me know. So, Every believer in Christ has been given the Spirit of God. And you, listening to me right now, that is, that is the key point I want to start from. You have the Spirit of God in you. And by virtue of the Spirit of God in you, you have to hear God's voice. It is not something you are trying to. By virtue of the fact that God gave you the Spirit, that means that the Spirit, the word of God is already inside of you. You don't have to try. You don't have to force it. So hearing God's voice is not something you should try to do. You should simply learn how to access it. Let me, let me, let me show you something really remarkable here. And I pray that you really get this. Let me read the scripture to you. If you have your Bibles there, let's go to Second. Um, Corinthians. Let me see. Second Corinthians chapter number three. If you are there, just go to Second Corinthians chapter number three. Let me let me read something I show you and, and uh, illustrate it. It says, "For as much as he are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink." So he says that we are letters that God has written, not with ink, that's physical ink, but with the spirit of the living God. So he's saying here that God has written a letter using his spirit. In other words, the spirit of God is ink. Please look at what I'm going to illustrate to you. Let me say this. Look at that. That is, just imagine that is an ink. Um, using an ink to write the word God like that. Listen to this mystery very carefully. God is saying that the Spirit of God is like this ink. What makes you see these words? Look at the word God right there. How wonderful is that? This ink is what creates the words. The word doesn't, this word God doesn't exist without the ink. For example, just imagine if I erase this ink, the word goes away. But once the ink is there, the ink forms the words. I want you to catch this. The spirit of God is the ink. The word is these words. So by virtue of the spirit of God being in you, the word of God has been given to you. In other words, the word, the spirit is the ink that creates the word. In other words, the spirit of God is being expressed in the word. Or if I put it in a different way, the word of God is the expression of the spirit. So, so beautiful. I really want you to catch that. That is so beautiful. So the spirit of God in you already means God's word is in you. It doesn't mean God's words are in you as if God is just speaking, speaking into your ears. Uh, just imagine like you have a radio inside of your heart and God is speaking in your ears repeatedly. No, that's not the way God speaks with us. The word of God is God himself. He's the revelation of himself, his will. So by virtue of the word, the spirit in you, God has inscribed his word in your spirit. Why is it important to know that? There is no struggle. You should not struggle to hear the word of God. You don't need to fast. You don't need to pray. You don't need to, just like I use that ink to inscribe the word God, you don't need to struggle. The word of God is already in you as a believer. My sheep hear my voice. That's what Jesus was speaking. So if that concept is in, is in place, we can move on to the next slide. 
please remember i really want you to catch every slide before i move on to the next so if you if you have some questions something you're not understanding please don't forget just type type the question out or you can unmute yourself and ask um, the question i'll be more than happy to go over it some questions i uh, will get to at the end so um, because i'm going to cover them in, in subsequent slides so let's let's continue if that is in place that you have the spirit of god so by virtue of the spirit you should have god's word you should not struggle now let's move on to the next this concept of spirit soul and body very very important remember i've thought about this let's see the spirit of god the day you got born again the spirit of god came into your spirit and became one with you first corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 17. let me let me get there and read that verse because it's such an important verse for us first corinthians 6 verse 17 it says but he that is joined unto the lord is one spirit he that is joined to the lord is one spirit so your human spirit has been connected and joined to the holy spirit they are not look look at this circle right there it is not two circles you don't see two circles side by side it means that the holy spirit is not existing in you as a separate spirit from you it is intimately united with you your spirit is what animates your thoughts your emotions and your will that's your person your personality so the way you are thinking, for example, right now, most of you, you have something in your mind. Hopefully what I'm talking about, there is a feeling in your heart right now. Or some of you, you, you just imagine, you decided to come and watch this webinar. That's your will, your volition, your intentions, your motivations. All of these things are animated by your spirit. Remember today's devotional, I was sharing something on this slide. Your spirit doesn't exist in you as a distinct entity from your soul. In other words, your spirit here can think and your soul here can think. That is not the way God made us. I was sharing and laying emphasis on this how in the Pentecostal milieu, this is a big error and a big source of confusion. In other words, the average Pentecostal thinks well, I can think with my soul and I can think with my spirit. No, that's not the way it works. Your soul, your emotions, your thoughts, that's you. There's nothing like the real you is your spirit. Your emotions are just something you have. No, that is not correct. This is you. This is your heart, your soul and your spirit. And how does the spirit operate inside of you in your heart? Your spirit operates in the soul, in your thinking, in your emotions, and in your will. Why is this so important? That means your spirit gives life to your thoughts, your emotions, and your will. If your spirit is active, your thoughts will be active, your emotions will be active, your will will be active. And also true of the body, your body would have life. When the spirit leaves, these thoughts, emotions, and will, they vanish. But your spirit continues to live. That's an important part and part of the confusion. I will not get into that today. And so, what does that mean? The spirit of God is one with your spirit. That means he who is one with your spirit, he uses the same way your spirit operates in you. That is, the Spirit of God influences your thoughts, your emotions, your will, including your conscience, that little voice. You remember that we often say that a voice said inside of me, that will be the voice of your human spirit speaking in your mind. The Holy Spirit works in the same way that your human spirit operates. There is nothing inside of you that is Holy Spirit and another one, human spirit. No. Everything inside of you that you can feel, which we call the heart, your thoughts, your emotions, your will, the way you feel, the way you are motivated, sometimes that little voice, that voice of conscience, those are the, those are the, those are the faculties of your soul. They are animated by your spirit. And those are the same faculties that the Holy Spirit uses. So, so important. 
What does that mean? When the Spirit of God speaks to you, He speaks to your spirit here. You don't hear it inside of you as your spirit. No, you hear it in your thoughts, in your emotions, or in your will. What does that mean? There are many of you, you got up today, you heard God, but you probably did not know it was God. That's what I'm going to get into probably the next slide or so, talking about perception and discernment. Why is this true? This is the, if you really want to understand and develop such an intimacy with the Holy Ghost, you have to understand this slide. You see how it is? You see the Holy Spirit is inside of you, is one with your spirit, and you don't, this is your heart. What we call the heart is this. It is the soul and the spirit, the heart. This is your body. So this is your heart. So inside of your heart, you have this, your human spirit, and you have your soul, but they don't work separately like we have been taught, like what I just said. No, they work as one unit. The spirit is operating in the soul. So what that means is when you are thinking, that is your spirit animating your thoughts. And it is in that same light that the Holy Ghost can animate your thought. He can speak to you and then you have a thought about a business. You, for example, this, this happens to me, especially in my morning devotions. That's why one of the, 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 one of the times when I really get inside, know what to do, know even the ministry I have, for example, I just told you that the Lord spoke to me. How did I hear? This is what I'm talking to you about. I, when I get into the mode of praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, my spirit is sensitive. My heart is sensitive. It is so easy. You begin to pick God's thoughts. I don't hear a voice inside of me telling you, for example, my, you hear a voice like Patrick or Delia or Franklin. Uh, you know, Anita, this is God and I'm speaking to you. No. God can speak with an audible voice like that externally and even internally. But 99% of the time, I will tell you, God will not speak to you like that. So point number, the point number two in this, God speaks using your soul the same way that you receive information. That's the same way he uses. It is not an audible voice. So please, from here, stop looking for an audible voice. Don't sit and you're listening and want to hear some sound inside of you or some shaking inside of you. No, please, you keep that aside, right? You keep that aside. God doesn't speak to you with an audible voice like that all the time. Most of you will never even hear an audible voice, but God will be talking to you multiple times and he wants you to be conscious of the fact that he speaks to you using the same faculties of your spirit, which are operating in the soul. Some of you, God will speak to you. You just get up. Oh, I don't, you wanted to travel. You just felt, I don't want to travel. I don't feel like traveling. You, you thought it was just your feelings, right? But because you are a child of God, your spirit is one with the Holy Ghost. Sometimes he will guide you using your emotions. And this, this, this is the one I love. Remember, I often teach that God will make you willing. I usually say, pray that God will make you willing. It, it, you don't feel like there is something inside of you that is the will of God, and then there is something inside of you that is different from your, your own will in the sense, in the way that I've been talking about Pentecostals. No. God makes you willing by making your will willing. Some, I'll, in a few slides, I'll show you how it is important to discern. So, how does God speak to me? He speaks to me in my spirit. And my spirit doesn't function inside of me separate from my soul. It functions in my thoughts, in my emotions, in my will. This is the one I love. Sometimes God will speak to you. You hear like the voice of your conscience. How many of you have um, realized this? You, you said... Well, I heard something, something said inside of me. It's a voice. It's not an audible voice. It's a knowing. You just know. It's almost like a voice. That is the voice of the conscience. It's the voice of your spirit speaking in your heart, in your mind. 
God can use, the Spirit of God uses that same voice to speak to you. This is another interesting one. Sometimes God will speak to you and all you hear in your thoughts is an image that you see. <laughs> you know, the, the prophets of old, a lot of time God will speak to them. The, the voice of God did not come to them as a voice. It came as a vision that they saw with their eyes. So sometimes God will speak to you. Some of you, you are, you are praying and out of a sudden you just see a tree. You know what that means, right? It, the image of a tree just crosses your mind. From today, I want you to pay attention to those images. That could be the voice of God in your heart. You are praying, and then out of a sudden, you see an image of something. You're like, what is that? I'm telling you today, and God is telling you today, son, daughter, I want you to learn to recognize my voice inside of you. So God can speak to you and he comes to you in the different ways that your soul operates. How wonderful. Now, one. So this is really the foundation of hearing God's voice. This simple slide right here. Let me, let me, let me go further. Perception. If that is the way we hear God inside, inside of us, it's not an audible voice like, Patrick, this is what I want you to do today. No, it's not like that. God will speak to you in your thoughts, in, your, in the voice of your conscience, in your emotions, in your, in your imaginations. But the most important of all of them is really your mind, your thoughts. So important. What is perception? Perception simply means is the ability to receive the things of the Spirit. In other words, the ability to know the things of the Spirit. You're listening to me right now. You're listening to the webinar. You are perceiving, you are hearing what I'm saying. That's what perception is. Ability to receive or detect reality. You can detect reality through the physical senses, the five senses that we know of, of the body. But the most important part is that God is perceived inside of you, in your heart, using the faculties or the senses of the heart. Let me... Look at this scripture again, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Listen to what it says. It says, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. What does that mean? Let me go back here. Number one, the natural man doesn't have the Spirit of God. So the Spirit, yeah, this Holy Spirit is not there. So his thoughts, emotions, and will cannot receive from the Spirit of God the way you can. So God doesn't speak to the unbeliever in the same way. Why? Because the unbeliever doesn't have the Spirit of God. He cannot receive the words of God like you. What a privileged position. So what is perception? Is the faculty of perceiving what is real. Is the faculty of receiving information from the Spirit. And how do you process that information? What are those faculties? They are the faculties of the soul I just talked to you about. Your thoughts, your thinking, your, your imaginations, your, you know, all of that. Your emotions, your feelings, your will, your motivations, your desires, what you're deciding to do. Those are faculties that can receive the things of the Spirit. So as you are listening to me right now, some of you, you are receiving something already inside of your spirit. You are perceiving God perceiving God. And that's, I'm going to talk to you uh, the, la the last slide. You can grow in this perception. Why is it that a prophet, a major prophet, like, um, let me see, I have, I have one of my, my, my young um, nephews in Cameroon back home. He's called Prophet Henry Bethan. Great, great man of God. You know, he's younger than me, but I see the gift of prophecy operating in him. When I was traveling, he called me, put me down. I said, uncle, he just started speaking to me. The things I'm going to experience in the U.S. So amazing. Now, he has that grace of greater perception of the things of the spirit because of that prophetic office that is given to him. So you see that we can have different abilities to perceive, to receive from the spirit. And the truth is that 
This perception can grow. You can grow in this. Your ability to perceive the things of the spirit can grow. How wonderful. To that. Is there any questions? Can we continue? I think I have just two slides more then get to discussing and um, hopefully having some time to pray. So everybody, everybody with us, if you have anything you are not very clear about, just make sure you can stop me, unmute yourself, write a question. So I want to make sure everybody understands this. All right? This is the purpose of this webinar. It's a time of training for you. So if I may, if I may ask, for example, what is your current state of perception? What is your current state of perception? You know, how do you, are you very perceptive of the spirit of God or not? Let me go back here. In other words, how sensitive are you to pick up when God? He's speaking to you. I'm clear, Eric. God bless you. In other words, when the Spirit of God speaks to you, how sensitive are your thoughts to pick up that message? That is your degree of perception. When the Spirit of God speaks to you, how sensitive is your will? So this is where the difference between us comes in. There are some believers who are very sensitive. Others are not so sensitive. But, um, yeah, I get from Robin right there. Robin says, I do not think I recognize his voice. It's very weak. Well, my prayer is that by the end of today's session, there's going to be a time of importation. The teaching you are receiving here, and we're going to have some time to communicate and pray. God is going to, I'm going to show you how to grow in this. And that's the good news. That's the purpose of this webinar, that your perception your perception of the things of the spirit to grow. Your perception of the things of the spirit to grow. If God speaks to you, your ability to receive it in your thoughts, your emotions, your will, your, 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 your heart should continually increase. You know, I just told you about the prophet who I, I uh, engaged with before traveling. How he spoke, he spoke some things to me, so amazing. That is impartation. In other words, God imparts that as a gift. Remember during our live Bible study, I talked about the three dimensions of the prophetic. There is the prophetic for everybody, every believer. There is a prophetic that comes as a gift, and there's a prophetic that comes as an office. So those are different degrees of perception. Every single believer, you are already perceiving the voice of God. The question might be, like Robin is saying, quite honestly, that it's very weak for her. In other words, her, her, her spirit, the degree of perception is not that strong, but it is there. It is there. As a child of God, you are no longer the natural human being. You have the spirit of God. So God is telling you, like, Son, daughter, your thoughts, your emotions, your will are already perceiving me. I just want you to increase in that. That is the whole idea about spiritual growth. So from perception, which is the ability to receive knowledge, the ability to know, let me get to discernment, which is a very interesting aspect. Very interesting. What is discernment? You'll find a couple of devotionals I've written on the website a lot about this. Discernment simply means distinguishing, making a difference. And let me explain this, going back to this critical figure right here. Remember, I said your human spirit from 1 Corinthians 6, verse number 17, it's, not just, it's no longer just your human spirit, you're not just ordinary. This is what it means you carry the nature of God. In other words, your spirit is not just you. It is, it is a, I don't know how God did it, but he alone be praised. It is a marvelous union between the spirit of man and the spirit of God. What an astonishing mystery. What that means is that in your thoughts, emotions, and will, because of our fallen 
nature, right? The old man, we still carry this body, the old body. So part of the fallen nature is still there. It still means that your thoughts can still be you or the Holy Spirit. <laughs> how, how interesting. Yeah, I used to be confused. Now the Lord helped you to understand that. So what does that, what is discernment? It means the ability for you to know and make a difference when it is you or when it is the Holy Spirit. Discernment can also mean distinguishing, you know, the Spirit of God from the Holy Spirit, but that is not our concern for today. The concern for today is how do you recognize and know that it is you and not the Spirit? How do you recognize that? That is called discernment. In other words, a thought comes into your mind. How do you know if it is you or if it is the Holy Spirit? <laughs> how interesting. Let, let, me, let, me, let me use uh, an example I often use to explain this. Some of you probably, you have, God has used you in the word of knowledge, or if you have not, and I pray that after today, you become sensitive and grow in that. If you have ever operated in the word of knowledge, you know, when God speaks something, something to you, gives you information about somebody you don't, you don't know about, how does that work? Let me explain it to you. It is your thoughts, God in you, the Holy Spirit animates your thoughts to know. In other words, you are looking at somebody and then you know what happened to them 20 years ago. How did you know? It's not mind playing. Your thoughts have been spiritualized. Let me put it that way. In other words, the Holy Ghost has spiritualized your thoughts. This is what we call the spiritual mind. It's the Holy Ghost having charge of your mind. So, False prophecy. Let me show you what I shared on Thursday. How does false, one of the manifestations of false prophecy? And I told you, if true prophet can give a false prophecy, and I showed you why. The spirit of God operates in the thoughts in the same way that that person operates. That person can receive information in their thoughts and they think it is from the spirit, whereas it is really not. And they you know, they might feel, oh, this is God speaking, but it is really not God. It is from the person. This is what is called flesh. How, how, how interesting, right? If, if you are confused about spirit, soul, and body, and what is the flesh, because of time, I can't really get into details. I have done a series of teachings on this. They are all free. You find them on our website and on, um, on our Facebook page. Please listen to them. I'm telling you, if you understand what I'm sharing you and you understand that teaching, the mystery of the gifts of the Spirit, how the Spirit of God operates in you, things will be clarified. It will not just be some mystical thing. You would, you would walk in a greater degree of assurance, assurance, knowing how God operates in you. You'll start growing in it. Do I also sometimes get confused? Yes. Sometimes I receive thoughts, I don't know if it's me or it's the Holy Ghost. That's why I'm also growing. So discernment simply means the ability to distinguish the flesh from the spirit. Flesh doesn't mean body yet. I've thought about that. It means you from the spirit. And this is, this, we are having this problem today as Christians simply because the old body is still there. The time is coming when God will give us a spiritual body. There's going to be no more confusion like this. But until then, we still have to deal with this. So discernment simply means making a difference between the Holy Spirit's voice and your own voice. It is learning to distinguish, distinguish the Holy Spirit from you. And training, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. I love, I love this verse. I've talked to you about perception, your ability, the degree to which you receive from the Spirit. It's, called, it's that perception I mentioned. Discernment is the ability to make a difference. Is this me or no? And most especially is to distinguish if God is speaking to you through somebody else or no. I've, I've, I've heard, I have the, had a classic example, you know, of false 
not not uh, not like he's a first he's a believer that loves the Lord. But I went to church one day and one 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 um, brother was just giving me a word of knowledge. I was just speaking to me something, and I just immediately I knew that was in God. You're going to ask me how did I know? There is no explanation. That's called discernment. You learn to recognize God's voice, even in other people. Because if you don't know, if you don't learn that, people will give you prophecies you think is God, whereas it is not God, it is them. It's not that they are trying to deceive you, per se. They might not be trying to deceive you. They might just be speaking from themselves. From themselves. So what is training? And this is the whole purpose of these webinars I am going to start from here to show you that you can be trained in perception and discernment. He says, strong meat, meaning the word of God, deep things in the word, belong to those who are mature, even those who by reason of use have their senses. Oh, not the physical senses, the perceptive senses of their heart. This exercise to discern both good and evil. You can grow in discernment. You can grow in perception. You know, what, what, so let me, I really want to keep this webinar short, more interactive. Next week, we are going to have another webinar session, same, you know, something very practical. You can, that's contact information right there. But I want to get back to some of the questions and concerns, and then we're going to pray. And just to discuss with you this, my purpose for this webinar today is by the end of today, by the end of today, you will be trained, trained, and you will become knowledgeable. What I've just told you, that's called importation. It's an eye opener, just opening your eyes to tell you how the Holy Ghost is operating in you. Why do we pray? Somebody asks, how do I increase discernment? Why do we pray? Praying is not just about asking from God. When you pray, something happens to your, your spiritual senses. They become sharpened. They become sharpened. Your perceptive ability increases. My greatest pleasure in prayer is not asking God to give me something. My greatest pleasure in prayer is not asking God to do something to my enemies or something else, right? Uh, my greatest pleasure in prayer is fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost. When you pray, something happens to your senses. I've told you the times when I receive a lot of information about ministry, what God is directing me is when I'm praying in tongues in the morning, especially like today in the morning. I was praying in tongues in the morning and the Lord started speaking to me about these webinars. How did he speak to me? I just told you, you have to understand this figure. Become sensitive. You perceive him. And then when you perceive it, you start beginning to ask, by growing in discernment, you know if it is God or not. You cannot teach this in a Bible school, discernment. No. This is one of those strange things that you cannot go and buy a book and learn discernment. No, it is something that's cultivated in your spirit. I can instruct you like this. I'll tell you, the word of God in your spirit is what imparts discernment. Praying and fellowshipping with the spirit will train you in discernment. I cannot give you follow X, Y, Z. You will know if it is God or not. Don't follow those kind of things. They'll lead you astray. You have to grow in discernment, fellowshipping with other brethren. You know what I'm doing right now? Impartation. Impartation. Just showing you, telling you, this is the way the Lord is dealing with you. So I want us to do something right now. And then before we, we close, let me see. Get. Oh, no, I missed that. Okay, let's see. So I want us to do something. I want you to practically, wherever you are right now, I want you to do something just to show you the practical impact of this. I'm going to give you a few seconds, just a few seconds. I want you to just close your eyes so that you don't get distracted wherever you are. Let me stop my screen share so I can see you. Okay. 
All right. Okay. So I want you to do this. Just close your eyes where you are. Let's do a simple, practical thing that I want you to do later. Just close your eyes for a few seconds. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you for the gift of your spirit. I thank you for my ability to perceive you. And I thank you for the gift of discernment. Lord, just speak something to me. I want you to do that right now. Just say, Lord, speak something to me. And once you say that, just be quiet for a few seconds. And I want you to pay attention. Listen to the, watch the thoughts that come into your mind. Maybe it's a feeling. Maybe it's an image that you see. No matter what it is, maybe it's just some voice in your heart. Just tell the Lord to speak something to you, whatever it is. And whatever comes to your mind, I want you to take note of it and watch the day. Just take note of it, keep it. When you are praying in the morning, start doing that. And then you begin to discover that God is speaking to you in truth. Maybe you want to go and get a job. Just sit down, pray. Just ask the Lord, Lord, what are you saying to me? And then begin to watch what comes into your heart. And then we, as you grow in perception and your ability to, you know, to, to discern the voice of God, you begin to realize that you can easily pick, oh, this is God, and this is not God. Hallelujah. Let's see a um, couple of questions there. Let me see. Let's get to some questions. If you have questions or uh, concern, I remember um, Lynn, I think it was Robin. Robin was saying she is weak. Just sharing with us how she's weak in her perceptive abilities, her ability to perceive God when God is speaking to her. My prayer is that by at the end of this meeting, you're going to, you're not just going to be tough in it, you're going to be founded, really, really founded. Okay. So any questions, any questions from anyone before we proceed and have some time to pray and close? Hello. I see. Um, this is I used to be confused about that again. I'm now clear. I see if, um, uh, I don't know if it's a brother or sister. It says, I do not think I recognize his voice. Well, I think you, from now on, you're going to, you just, you're just going to grow in it. Because discernment simply means that ability to recognize when it is God or not. I'll tell you that for me, practically, one of the biggest problems of recognizing the voice of God was I was failing to know that it was God speaking and not me. And I'll tell you, Fire Tablet, you discover that as you have learned this, you're going bad. Recognizing God's voice will not be difficult you will now begin to focus on discernment because God is already speaking with you, speaking to you. You discover that now your problem is really not that God is not speaking. It's how to recognize that voice. In other words, what you're asking is how do I discern to know if it is God or not? Remember, when God speaks to you, it's not going to be something hidden inside of you. No, it will be your thoughts. It will be that voice. So it's not going to be something that you don't, it's so low that, you're trying to squeeze yourself to recognize it. No, it's going to be your thoughts. You might just sit down like what I just said. You took a few seconds and you just ask yourself, ask tell the Lord to, to speak to you, right? The thought will come. It's not difficult. The question now is how do I recognize it? And that's discernment. I want you to grow in that. So no more concerns about God not speaking to me. The concern is going to be, I want to grow in my perception. I want to grow in my recognition, which is discernment of his voice. Know that this is God talking to me. So we're going to pray. I want you to just take a few seconds. Just take a few seconds now, as I said. Just thank the Lord. Just bless his name. Thank him for the gift of his spirit. Thank him for the gift of the word. Thank him for this training session that we are having. And just tell him, Lord, speak something to me, anything. Just tell me something. If the Lord puts something in your mind, you can, you can share it with us here, right? Whether it's in your mind, the way you feel, whether it's something about a problem, whether it's something you're going to do today, no matter what it is, just take these few seconds 
and I'm going to stop talking so that you can have some time. Just focus on it, and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. Just pray for everyone that's watching. Pray for those who are going to watch this recording. I pray that, Lord, our God, your voice will be clear. We would grow in our perception and discernment of your voice. We will not be confused. Lord, I pray from today Lord our God, your voice will become clearer and clearer to us. We will not be deceived by our own self or deceived by other people. We will not be led astray by our hearts or led astray by the leadings of other people. Lord, I pray that let it be an importation of this grace, this grace upon your children in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord our God, there shall be no confusion. They would know what you are telling them about ministry. They will know what you're telling them about that relationship, about that business, that financial endeavor, that, that issue in their family. They will know what to touch and turn things around. They will know what is the pain and the root of any cause of frustrations and bitterness and just darkness in any area of their lives. Your voice will come with clarity with light. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let that name alone be praised. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Oh, praise the name of the living God. Quite excited. Let me see if I can share these slides. These slides here. Oh, you know, just pardon me. I'm still figuring out how to use this thing called Zoom. <laughs> so, I would, uh, I have the slides. I really love you to have those, but I'm trying to figure out how to share that. I don't know. Probably there should be a way out. But, well, God bless you all. Thank you so much. Next week, uh, as the Lord leads, I'm going to get into something else very practical. Practical. It's going to be hands-on training. Don't forget, after this, I want you the entire week until next. Just send me your emails, your experience. Something has happened. I want you to go and practice it and see for yourself that this thing works. And this what you'll be excited to discover that the Holy Ghost is closer to you than you ever thought. Quite amazing. God bless you and um, you stay blessed there. Bye-bye.